have an author and a finisher of our faith, but it's up to us to accept it or reject it. The Lord will not finish anything we reject. We decide that. Not one of us is going to be forced to go to the kingdom. We decide that. Whatever we decide, that's what we'll walk in. If people are still walking in flesh, they have decided for those things of the flesh. You will walk in or live in or live by what you have chosen that moment. Every time we walk in the flesh, we have chosen to do so. But the Lord has come and a promise he does have for those who choose him. That attempt to walk in the spirit is beautiful. That attempt we put forth over and over and over and over. Not choosing the flesh, but admitting that we're weak and repent of those things of the flesh and choose to walk in the spirit. See, that's when Jesus finishes what he began in us because we choose him. That means he is the strength that gets you all the way through, but you are responsible for making the choice. Your heart's desire, you will do. So what are you doing? In your conversation, there are changes that take effect in a person who walks in the spirit. We're not to have corrupt communication. We are not to emulate another man. As for me, I agree with the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. I don't necessarily agree with anybody else. I agree with the Lord. I won't follow another person, but I will follow Christ. See, we can walk beside each other, but don't follow me. You can walk with me, but do not follow me. When John was speaking to the angel, and he was about to edify that angel, that angel said, oh, no, 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 I'm a fellow servant like you are. Angels are your fellow servants in different places. So that means we should be loyal to Christ and walk with our brothers and our sisters so long as they too are loyal to Christ. Oh, so many things have to be thought about, pondered in us so that we can come to that place of truth within ourselves so that we don't deceive ourselves because it will be a sad day if we are turned away. See, that's sad for me to think about for other folks. And it's not to say I think I've made it. Nope, I'll never have that thought. You can forget it. So long as I am here, there's something undone. When I finish my race, I will not be here on the earth. That's when I'll be with the Lord. But while I'm here on this earth, I know that I can walk in the Spirit. I can partake of the kingdom and those things of the kingdom. I have a choice to choose the Lord or to choose things of the world. This is every day. And Lord knows we have a long way to go in a very short time. But if we're going to get there, it takes an internal commitment to the Lord. A commitment, not that you would speak it. Don't speak a commitment because any oath made to the Lord, he's surely going to hold you accountable. So don't do it by your mouth, but by way of the heart, determine yourself to finish this race in righteousness, casting away all things of darkness, all things of flesh, all these previous things and previous ways we had. Throw them away. See, the good news of Christ is that right now, this very day, you're brand new. See, if you repent right now, you're brand new. You don't have to deal with what you messed up yesterday. No matter how bad it was, you can be brand new today. And that means you're squeaky clean. It's like taking a shower, taking a bath right now through repentance. But be mindful that repentance is when you turn away from something and you don't enter back into that thing again. Repentance is not just simply asking for forgiveness. You can ask for forgiveness, but we're called to repent. And repentance is the change of your life. Some people have to make decisions. You still have girlfriends and boyfriends and you're not married. You think you'll go to the kingdom of God and you're not married? No, you will not. You already know that. People can justify that a thousand ways, but the Lord has already communicated the uncleanness in our lives. Has he? We got to make some changes. It's time for us to truly get ready, to truly get prepared. I tell you, once you walk with the Lord, you have no fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. There's only one perfected love, and that is a love of the living God. Should it fall down on us, not be toward us. Because see, God said he commanded his love towards us in that he sent his only begotten son. We're not talking about his love being commanded toward us. Nope, we're talking about his love falling on us. You know what it really is? Shekinah glory. That's when we, we have drawn close to the living God by casting away these things of this life. Saying, Lord, I'm yours. Draw near unto him and he'll draw near unto you. But he also said, people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That means a person looks like they're Christian. They act like they're Christian. But inside, 
something else is going on. Inside, there's still bitterness. Inside, there's still fear. Inside, things are still wrong. This is what we have to change. People have perfected changing themselves on the outside. We're not here to do that, but to clean out the inside, to be able to open up and say, inspect me, Lord Jesus, and show me what is not pleasing to you. See, when you do that, that means you have cleaned up yourself as best you know how. And when you open up to the Lord, he will point out what should not be there. This process of doing that often causes people to get angry. I'll tell you why. Because he always uses his children on this earth to point things out in us. So somebody may come to you as soon as you say, Lord, point out what's wrong with me. Somebody's going to come up to you and tell you something about yourself. And you may get angry. But see, you just ask the Lord to show you something about yourself. He will use a child to show you many things about yourself. He'll use your enemy, your friends, your loved ones. Be ready for the answer. Don't pray for something or ask for something. And then when it comes, reject it because you're offended. Resist the spirit of offense so that you can continue to learn and to walk forward. Suppose you have a problem playing bingo. You didn't tell a soul. And you say, Lord, inspect my heart and show me what is unclean. So your best friend calls you and says, hey, you want to go to bingo? And you say, oh, yeah, I'll go. And then they say, you sure? Because you, you seem to like that more than the average person. And then you get offended. You may say, don't judge me. How dare her judge me? See, that's not correction. That is when the Lord shows you what's going on on the inside of you. In subtleties, you pick up on these things. The Lord that also, he does not whisper what you need to change. No, he'll send people and they'll tell you. They have no idea what they're talking about. You do. You put it together that way. They'll point out things. And it's so funny because they won't slander you. They won't do any of those things. But they'll bring it out. So you have to be willing to hear all, but be careful because the accuser comes out too. As soon as you say, Lord, point out what is incorrect in me, but see, I've learned something. When the accuser comes out and the accuser starts accusing you, don't reject the accusation. Clean yourself up of the accusation that the accuser may not accuse. How about that? Satan cannot help but to talk about every piece of darkness he has invested in you. Now, believe it or not, I know it's a mind shaker, but every piece of darkness that we have in us is from Satan. That's why Jesus said, the prince of the world cometh and he hath nothing in me. You remember that? When he was about to die. Because Satan had no investment in Jesus as there was no darkness in him. He was in flesh like we were tempted in all, at all points, like we're tempted, but without sin. He was without sin. We are with sin. So when the accuser comes, he will accuse you of what you used to do. Make sure that you're not doing it. Don't become bitter. You resist the accuser. You resist the devil. You resist Satan. You resist the fallen. You resist the children of the fallen by applying scripture to your life. Not getting into a mouth match with one of them because you'll lose every time. So when Satan comes to you with an accusation saying, you really think you're going to heaven? You're an adulterer. That's when you say, yep, I sure am. And I'm going to repent it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross. See, you approach him with scripture. You don't run away like you're in shock. Get mad at the world. Get mad at the person. Don't do that. That's not resisting the devil. That's entertaining him. If you get angry, you have entertained Satan. If you get bitter, you have entertained Satan. But if you apply what Jesus said to your life, you are resisting the devil. You're resisting the opposition to God's word. Why did Michael dare not to bring an accusation upon Satan? railing accusation. He did not bring any railing accusation against Satan. Why? Because that's what Satan does. Satan is the one that digs up your past and throws it in your face. But I've learned something. He can only dig up and throw in your face those things that cause you to slip. When you stop slipping and falling, when you stop backpedaling and everything else, because when somebody accuses you of your past, if you fight back, you've gotten out of grace. But and if you apply righteousness to the event and somebody says, well, you used to do so and so. If you're now one of those upright, because that happened to me one time at a dinner table. And I told the person, I said, yep, but you have it wrong because it was worse than that. I shut down the whole conversation. When, when that came up, I knew the purpose of it. But here's what happens. Those things that Satan would accuse you of in the past, once you start making your transition, they become what your testimony 
he can't accuse you. He won't accuse you because he'll give space for a testimony. Because a moment I said, yep, you're right, but it was worse. Because I did I did what you never thought of. That's what was in my heart. In other words, somebody accused me back in the day of doing something. And I said, yes, I did that. But it was far worse than what you just said. And I began to talk about it and how Jesus made the change in me. See, it becomes a moment of strength for somebody else. And that was the last time anybody ever did that. Why? Because Satan is not going to bring you to a point where you can tell your testimony. That is contrary to who he is, period. Haven't you noticed that when you're no longer hurt by something, it goes away. When you're no longer offended by something, it's never said. When you're no longer moved by something, it's not used. Haven't you learned this yet? Satan only utilizes what works against you. When Jesus was being tempted of the devil 40 days, he tried every avenue, every major avenue he could to get to Christ. But because Christ responded with scripture, he couldn't go any further. The way he tempted Jesus is the same way he tempts you all the time. And the last card is what? A promise of massive power and wealth. That's the last card. See, he does tempt you to eat. How many of you have gotten into a bad position? And you said, wow, if I don't do something, I'm going to starve. And so you did a little crooked thing because you, you, you knew you had to supply yourself with something. So you did something not quite right. Every single thing Jesus went through, you go through on a daily basis. Satan uses those same things in your life. I know Jesus is my Lord. Do you know that he is your Lord? Because to go through something and to still say yes, Lord, not because you're going to look good around people, but at that point, you don't care about anybody and you don't see anybody but the Lord. What happened to Paul on the road to Damascus? He couldn't see anybody. What happened in your situation? God put you in a situation where you didn't see anybody else really. They were around, but you didn't see anybody else. You said the magic word so many times, oh, I'm so alone. That's right. That's where he put you with everybody else around you. You were alone because he was speaking. See, without the influences of others, without the promise of security by way of these tangible things that we have, that's when you face who you really are and you make a decision of what you really are about. When everything looks good, it's easy to say, thank you, Lord. What about when everything is taken away? How about when you don't feel good? How do you treat other people? When you're in pain. Oh, I've been through that one too. I'm so nice. The worse I feel, the nicer I am. Do you know why? A thought hits me that somebody has it worse than me. I don't even, I never think of myself when I'm hurt, injured, in pain, sick, or any of those things. I'm always thinking somebody out there is worse than me. Lord, embrace them. I do what I can do because now I understand the pain of somebody else. See, you may not know this, but every situation you're in, the Lord is speaking. That's how he speaks. Let me give you a case in point so you understand this. The Lord said something in the Old Testament that was a dead giveaway. God Almighty said it. He said, why should I stricken my children anymore? They just will rebel more and more. See, that's a dead giveaway. When things go haywire in your life, that's your Father in Heaven speaking. That's not Satan having his way. That's your Father in Heaven speaking. He sent plague after plague upon his people. And guess what he was doing it for? That was him speaking. And he said, why should I stricken them anymore? They'll just rebel more and more. He told us why he did it. He told us what he was saying to them. He said, but they hardened their hearts and they would not hear. When they went through correction, they didn't praise my name. They didn't get the message. And it's so funny because naturally, when we're in trouble, it is odd to us. It? But sometimes with your eye, you can be so frightened of your circumstances that your true character comes to the surface and you start saying, Lord, above all things, help me. That's what you say. And that's not the right answer. That's an immature answer, but it's okay because the Lord will send trials and tribulations and speak to you and open his arms to you to demonstrate things you can learn no other way. There's no other way you can learn loyalty than through God's prescribed process. See, loyalty unto the Father is simply loving him back. It's not following him around everywhere he goes. It is to recognize his love. See, it's not like your relationship with your earthly dad. It's different. When you trust the Lord, you fear no situation. And ultimately, we are to trust him. We are to love him and trust him. And he's getting us to that point. How does he do this? Why would he do this? He's not demanding it of anybody. He desires it. That you see his love for you. Oh, my. All that so you can recognize his love for you. But why do you think that the apostle said, I'm convinced now 
that nothing in the heavens or in the earth can separate us from the love of God. Why? Because he had been through so many situations and he got it. He didn't say that at the beginning. He said that near the end because they were learning in the Lord good because he's getting us ready. But again, it's our choice to choose him or not. But I tell you this, if we choose him and stop making excuses, and when I mean making excuses, justify in front of everybody else the little sins that we do because we want to do them, justifying them so we can look better in view of somebody else when we stop doing that and get real with the Lord, and then we choose Him. He is the strength that will pull you all the way through. By yourself, you already know you can't do it. You already know you don't have enough strength to endure the diversities of temptations that come your way. You already know there are things inside of you that won't allow you to complete. And to be frank with you, there are certain things you like that you should not like. You already know this. It's not by our power, nor by our might, we'll get through this. No, that's our Savior. He will become our strength once we honestly choose Him. When we honestly choose Him. You know what He's going to do with our choice? Have you noticed in the Bible, what happens to everybody when they make a choice? What happens to everybody who ever made a choice for the Lord in the Bible? What took place? They were tried. It's almost like God's communication. You say, Lord, I'm, I'm committing myself to you wholeheartedly. And then something happens. You're tried. If you maintain, then you have truly chosen him. You truly meant what you said. But if something comes and you go run away, because he's not going to send you something that totally overwhelms you. It's not what he does. He will send you something proportional to your ability to get through it. That's how you know it's the Lord. Listen to me carefully. When something totally overwhelms you and you do everything you can to resist it, but you cannot, you're being shown something. You're being tried when something comes and you have the strength to get through it. That's when you're being tried. See, the Lord said he would never put anything upon you beyond that which you can bear. That's your trial and your tribulation. That's when he confirms things in you, just like Abraham. Now, why would he do this? Somebody may ask, well, if God knows what you're going to do before you do it, no, the Bible says he knows what you're going to ask before you ask him. See, God gave us something, something you ought to be aware of. When it comes to what you will do, God gave you freedom of choice. And when you have freedom of choice, you don't predict what somebody will do. You simply allow them to take a path. That part is fully in your hands to choose and choose free. See, God is a just God, an upright God. So he's not going to set the conditions or lean the game. He's going to give you an equal measure of darkness and light as you can handle. He's going to give you a choice. Based on that choice, you're going to begin to live your life or walk. But have you noticed that everybody who committed themselves unto the Lord, they were tried for that commitment. And once they were tried, that's when the Lord said, let's go. Paul on the road to Damascus, Peter being jailed and beaten and everything else. All the apostles had the weight. They were put in very bad con uh, uh, situations, scary ones too, even when Jesus was there. But their trust was in him because they could see him. That's what he said. He said they believed because they could see. But you know what he said? Blessed are they who believe and cannot see. That's you. He called you blessed beyond measure. So you have an awesome opportunity before you and your choices, because if you choose the Lord and you do so, you can't see the Lord. And he already spoke about us. He even told his disciples and all those that were with him. He said, you believe because you can see. But he said, blessed to those who believe and have not seen. Thank you, Lord. He had you born in a time to be blessed beyond measure. Is that not awesome? He put you in this timeline where you are right now on purpose with the conditions that you have. Your blessings are extraordinary. See, the truth is, without being blessed the way we are, we would be consumed. As to the extent of the fullness of that blessing, we don't know yet because there's still some more things to do. But we're going to find out. We will know how we are blessed. And you know, there are certain things that must be fulfilled before you die. Before you get out of that flesh, there are things on earth that must be fulfilled in your life. No one leaves until certain things are fulfilled. Those who by their own accord chose Jesus. See, those who were taken early, they served a purpose for the sakes of somebody else. Everything's accounted for for a child that dies early. That's accounted for. God already knows about those situations. But to the ones who were able to choose the Lord, you have a special work before you. Some were not meant to make it this far. Some were meant to serve a totally different purpose, a different purpose. But you chose the Lord of your own accord. 
and you believe without seeing, that means you are you are super blessed. And there are certain things that must be fulfilled in your life. Should you make that commitment toward the Lord, things will be fulfilled expediently. Don't let your situations, the sickness in your body, or any of those things, don't make them have you sit and contemplate, does the Lord love you or not? Oh, yes, he loves you, or you would not have life. You cannot believe in the Lord. Be in a situation where things are not too favorable to you. See, because there's always going to be something. If you have your health, you're going to go through other issues. If you have your health and finances, you're going to have relationship issues. I'm just telling you what I know. As soon as you solve one thing, it's like something else turns up. You're always going to be in a position where you have resistance. Always. But in that resistance, you're going to find a voice. The voice of the Lord speaking directly to you. When you trust the Lord more, you're actually looking for Him more and embracing His Word more. That's why the more you trust the Lord, the more you're going to embrace what He departs to you. And the more you're going to look to Him and not everybody else. See, to look to somebody else, you have to turn away from Christ, don't you? With all these things, folks, it really is time to get ready to truly consider how ready we are so that you're in a good position no matter what comes upon the earth no matter what manifests in your life no matter who goes or who stays because if you're prepared the joy of the lord will stay with you and you will be a good help to those who remain